Welcome back. Join us for part 2 as Deku faces a world where he's lost everything and finds himself surrounded by women. Let's see what unfolds for our hero in this intriguing sequel. As he rose slowly from the ground, feeling every ache in his body. Izuku, why you're a son of a bitch. The man standing in front of him simply laughed mockingly. All for one, my mother was killed by me a long time ago. Both locked eyes, all for one's gaze exuding power, malice. Bakugo, on the ground with a stake in his chest, barely stayed awake, watching as Izuku activated one for all. And his body began to turn a deep red. Reiko, no, Midoriya. Izuku, one for all, two, million percent. His arm couldn't bear the pressure and exploded. With a cry, he fell to his knees on the ground. All for one, with a calm smile, approached him. It was the perfect moment to steal one for all, the power that belonged to him in part but. Izuku, kaboom, you bastard, he said with a mocking smile, causing all for one to open his eyes in fear, five million percent. And the world began to tremble, so much power in one person, it was no surprise what would happen. All for one tried to run, but Izuku, leaping, exploded his legs. But, thanks to the size of all for one's suit, he soared into the sky along with him. All for one, you're a fool. Izuku, I always was. And his body exploded. He fell with a bit of force from his bed, blushing, and began to move his hands around, realizing it was night time. Looking around his room, he was able to calm down. Izuku, a dream? He asked, confused. Come on, Midoriya, make us women. Izuku, it seemed so real. He started breathing heavily until he could calm down and, with a deep sigh, began to rub his eyes. He stayed on the ground for a while, thinking about his dream, how it suddenly turned into a fight, and how he had felt every part of him explode. He had seen everything as if it had been real. Even the smell. Izuku, I really need to bathe, he said, smelling his clothes. And with a big sigh, he looked at the clock on his wall, realizing it was five in the morning, a good time to start his day. He stood up and slowly began to take off all the clothes on top of him, a kendo pajama that luckily was a bit comfortable for him. Entering the bathroom, he locked the door. He turned on the hot water tap and waited for a while for his tub to fill up. After about 10 minutes, this action was completed, and Izuku simply entered. He squirmed a bit as he felt the hot water engulfing his body, cleaning the dirt in his wounds, removing the last traces of dust and mud he had. Izuku, this is life, he whispered with a small smile. Hey, why are all of them women, damn it. Izuku, oh, this idiot. Deku, Deku, it wasn't a dream, Deku, tell me you're here. Izuku, I'm not. Idiot, I'm not joking, what the hell is going on here? Izuku, they're all women, Bakugo, go to sleep, he shouted, annoyed. But he gave a small shout as he saw the door of his bathroom explode. Bakugo, why are all of them women, even four eyes and spiky hair? Izuku, we were brought to this place because of all for one. Bakugo, and why the hell are you so calm? Izuku, Bakugo, I haven't bathed in weeks, let me enjoy my bath, he said, sinking into the tub. Bakugo, nerd, I'm going to blow up your tub. Izuku, and now why? He said, annoyed. Bakugo, you're too calm, and I'm too anxious. The old lady is in another dimension, the old lady and my old man can't defend themselves. Izuku, and since when do you care? Bakugo, they're my parents, idiot. So right now you either take me to my dimension or I kill you. Izuku, Bakugo, are you an idiot? Bakugo, no, you're the idiot. Izuku, no, you're the idiot. Bakugo, no, you. Izuku, you. They looked at each other for a moment, and Izuku, with a deep sigh, just got out of the tub to put on shorts. The girls were quickly coming up the stairs, somewhat worried about all the shouting, and Ibura quickly grabbed Yui with her vines, pulling her back along with everyone else, avoiding Bakugo who had flown out and crashed into the wall. Izuku, you're a damn idiot of mine. Setsuna, Midoriya? Izuku, huh? Good morning, he said with a slight smile. Kendo, what do you mean, good morning? What's going on here? She asked, confused. Ibura, th the wall she whispered nervously. Midoriya, all the girls said in unison, as an aura began to emanate behind them. Izuku only narrowed his eyes, looking at Bakugo, and Bakugo did the same. Bakugo, I'm scared. 
Izuku, me too. Living among so many women will be difficult. Later. Everyone was gathered in Gamma Field, wearing their hero costumes. Luckily, Bakugo still fit, but Izuku's. Kendo, sorry, but I'm the only one with something in your size, she said with a nervous laugh. Bakugo covered his mouth to muffle his laughter, but it was inevitable. Izuku, I have to admit, it has very good ventilation, he said, looking at his crotch. Bakugo, really? Izuku, yeah, it protects you, but it ventilates, a lot of air passes through. Bakugo, hey, hey. Izuku, what? Bakugo, look, a beetle. Izuku, where? Bakugo punched him hard in the shoulder, ow, that hurt, idiot, he said, hitting him back. Izawa, all right, everyone quiet down. And you, he said, seeing neither of them paying attention as Bakugo punched Izuku hard in the shoulder again. Izawa just sighed heavily. Izawa, all right, these will be urban fights, your opponents will be chosen at random. While Izawa spoke, the girls watched with a sweat drop as Izuku and Bakugo kept hitting each other harder and harder, to the point of falling to the ground. Izawa, this will be to prepare you for battles where you have no idea who your opponent is or how. And in the distance, Izuku and Bakugo were rolling. All of them, even if they didn't admit it, wanted to team up with one of the two boys. They prayed not to face either of them. Their power was immense, and they didn't want to find out what they were capable of at their max. Midoriya, I want to go with you. No, I want to, I let you sit on my thighs. I took care of your wounds, let me go with you. All the girls from their class pulled the boy towards them, causing Izuku to gradually feel dizzy. Hey Baku bro, want to go together? She asked with a big smile. Baku go? He asked, confused. Um, no, my name is Esmeralda Kirishima. Nice to meet you, she said, clenching her fist and extending it towards the boy. Bakugo only looked at the girl for a moment. That smile, that personality, reminded him so much of one of his best friends. And with that calm smile, he just bumped fists with her. Let's kick some extra ass, he said with a smile. Um, yeah, she said nervously smiling. Izawa, all right, everyone be quiet, and you, Midoriya. What? They both asked. Izawa, Midoriya, okay. We'll all call Midoriya here Izuku to avoid confusion with the Midoriya here, and we'll call Bakugo homosexual. Izawa, it's a good nickname, I don't know what it means but it's easy to learn. Alright, we'll call Bakugo homosexual. Now let's start with the fights. Bakugo simply stood there with an aura of sadness on the ground while Izuku in the distance just laughed, trying to hide it. No, I refuse that nickname. Call me. Bakugo. Bakugo thought for a moment, and seeing that he had no choice, he sighed heavily. Call me Kachan. Izuku briefly opened his eyes with a little surprise, and with a calm smile, he just turned away. All right, Kodai, you'll be my partner, he said, taking the girl's shoulders to start walking with her. Yes, she said with a slight blush, leaving the rest of her classmates with a pout. Izawa, all right, now that the teams have been decided, the matches will begin. Mentioning the different matches with the teams that were quickly made, Izawa began to organize and face them off based on connection and power, so no team would be unbalanced, even if it meant the field would be destroyed with those two. Izawa, Team Yui Kodai and Izuku, you'll go against Esmeralda Kirishima and Kachan. The girls were a little scared to see the smiles of both, as if they were piercing through them, filling them with fear, and those who were between them felt the cold run down their spines. Izawa, all right, the last mentioned team, step into the arena, they will go first, he said, so both duos nodded and began to walk to their place. After a while, both opponents were in position. Yui looked a little nervous, as did Esmeralda, next to the boy. They looked so imposing. Izawa, all right, on three, two, one, fight. Yui had to cover her face, the strong gust of wind the boy left in his wake was enough to send a few metal pipes flying. I'm coming for you, Kachan, Izuku exclaimed. Esmeralda had to throw herself to the ground to avoid getting hurt any more than she could bear. Nerd, you jerk, Bakugo shouted. All of them had a bead of sweat seeing how both boys were the first to come out. They didn't even make a plan, they just wanted to fight. Izuku used his black whips to swing among the pipes in the area. Luckily, he already knew the terrain well. All of them watched with amazement at the precision with which he navigated through the narrow spaces, and that big smile, which for some reason, gave them a chill of anticipation. And then there was Bakugo, 
the boy they didn't tolerate much. He was much more annoying and arrogant than his counterpart from this place, and that was saying a lot. But nobody discredited his talent, and unlike his male counterpart, he was louder and more destructive. Here I am, nerd. Come on, come at me. Using his explosions, he soared into the sky, wanting to have the perfect view. And his perfect view was a fist to his face. Shot towards one of the water tanks, Bakugo simply started laughing while everyone watched in surprise as the boy floated. I'm here too, Izuku whispered with a mocking smile. The water tank was destroyed by an explosion, and that explosion also propelled the boy into the sky. 1. Izuku dodged his punch. 2. The green-haired boy managed to shield himself with his arms, but the magnitude of the explosion was so great that it sent him flying into the ground, leaving a large crack in his wake. Everyone worried, but a sigh of satisfaction escaped as they watched the boy get up from the ground as if nothing happened. Good hit, he whispered, wiping away some blood dripping from his lips. All of them in the cameras didn't even want to blink, even the strongest ones wanted to see the fight, they wanted to see how much power these boys had. Miss Izumi. Uh, what's up All Might? She asked, confused. I want you to analyze this fight because it's going to get even more interesting, he said, with a nervous smile, causing Izumi to nod. Good punching bag, Bakugo shouted mockingly. And in an instant, Izuku was by his side. Don't call me that again. What started as a game, a joke, turned into something serious when, with a furrowed brow, he punched Bakugo in the abdomen with such force that it made him spit out a bit of blood. Hey, oh yeah, what will you do, you damn nerd? And Bakugo also managed to land a punch in the same spot, although it wasn't as powerful, it still left the boy breathless. What I've always done. Cry? Everything was audible to the girls, while Yui and Esmeralda just watched from below with a bag of popcorn each. Like you, I took All Might's quirk? He asked, as his smile turned mocking, teasing Bakugo. Why you want to touch, L. Low traumas, eh? I killed my mother? Aizawa, oh no, All Might, we have to stop them, this is not funny for either of them. All Might, Aizawa. Aizawa, what? She asked, worried. All Might, we can't he whispered, scared. And a hollow sound echoed throughout the place. Bakugo gradually began to see blurry, while blood started trickling down both their foreheads. W what? Why don't we go a little further, Bakugo? He punched him on the right side of his face, and Bakugo went flying towards a part filled with metal pipes, intensifying his pain. And now you, you'll kill him. This guy's going to kill me, he whispered, scared. And now you, you'll kill him. You're an idiot if you think I'm going to kill the nerd, I'd rather die than bend over for you damn fourth-rate villains. Can we kill this stupid brat? Shigaraki asked, annoyed. No, I have the perfect plan for you. Stay away from me, idiot. All for one, I'll just give you a little gift, it won't hurt too much, at least not enough to kill you. All for one placed his hand over the boy's eyes, and Bakugo began to scream. Even Dobby, the most resistant to such things in the group, turned away. For some reason, those screams filled him with fear. Let me go, you son of a bitch. Come on, Bakugo, just a little longer. Damn it. Koga started to cry, something impossible for her. Just seeing the pain inflicted on the human being in front of her, killing aroused excitement in her, it brought ecstasy. But even she has a limit. Let me go. No pain is in vain. He removed the metal tubes from around him, his torn suit, and his head bleeding, and Izuku was getting closer and closer to him. This crap is supposed to work, I just have to concentrate. He saw two Izuks approaching him at such an exorbitant speed that it seemed like they would arrive at any moment. Come on, Katsuki, focus on your goal. He closed his eyes, Izuku was getting closer. He was about to hit him in the face. They all closed their eyes in fear, it would end with him. Bakugo, erase. What the hell? That's Aizawa's quirk. They all exclaimed, surprised. What the hell? I don't even know he said with a mocking smile, giving the boy an explosion that sent him crashing into the ground. It's over, they all whispered, surprised. Izuku can't use his quirk anymore, it's obvious who the winner is. How frustrating, Setsuna sighed angrily. I wanted Izuku to win. No. It can't be, Kendo whispered in shock. What a pa. They all whispered in shock. Yui and Esmeralda quickly ran to the impact site, but neither of them could hold back the urge to vomit at the sight of the boy. Nerd, no. I I don't pity M me, he stuttered, son of a bee bitch. Nerd, that's enough, this was E enough. You've d done more H harm, Bakugo. See come on, 
Come and sh show the sh shit you are, d don't pretend to look good in front of people. Damn extra. Those words were the trigger for the human bomb. You've left me a mess, damn useless, you've erased your quirk. What do you plan to do? What I've always done, get up from the ground and keep fighting. You know why? Why, idiot? Because I. We must stop them. Izuku probably doesn't feel pain because of the adrenaline, but it's something incurable, and if he keeps going, an infection might spread, she shouted, scared. It doesn't matter if we can't, that boy is like my student, just being a man, and I won't let anything happen to him. Now let's go, she yelled angrily, so All Might nodded, and both of them went toward the boys. I won't lose. He got up from the ground, and Bakugo quickly tried to knock him down with another explosion, but he couldn't react when an iron pipe hit him in the face. He got up from the ground, and Bakugo quickly tried to knock him down with another explosion, but he couldn't react when an iron pipe hit him in the face. What? I still have another arm, do you remember? He asked with a mocking smile. This was no longer funny, it was no longer exciting, it was terrifying. Had he just lost a limb, and neither of them said anything? How twisted must their minds be not to be horrified to see him there? The bone of his arm was sticking out, and none of them said anything. It is said that madness in a human being comes at the precise moment when their mind breaks beyond repair. The mind of a boy that was shattered from the moment he became conscious, and only with willpower kept it afloat, and the mind of a boy corrupted by power and the superiority he proclaimed. After going through so much, their minds never returned to normal, and although they might seem normal, nothing could be further from the truth. Aizawa and All Might arrived as fast as they could, Bakugo prepared his glove as his eyes glowed red, and Izuku. He grabbed a metal pole, while the rest of his forearm bled profusely, and he didn't even care. He had lost so much, so many people he cared about, so many people he loved, and he had lost so much. That he didn't care if he lost himself. In madness. Aizawa and All Might were moving as fast as their bodies allowed. Both of them were scared, frightened about what could happen to the two boys because, to both of them, they were like their students. For All Might, it was like the person she saw as a daughter. Bakugo's eyes, for some reason, had the ability to nullify Izuku's quirk. And Izuku, with one arm and a metal bar, stood there under the terrified gaze of everyone. Bakugo, Deku, we need to get you checked. That damn arm. Izuku, no way, Bakugo. We have to fight. We have to. Their laughter seemed out of control, as if the whole situation amused them. Bakugo, Deku, what's wrong? He asked, concerned. Izuku, what? what's wrong? I'm scared. Tears streamed down amidst his laughter. Bakugo, at that moment, softened his gaze and walked towards the green-haired boy. Bakugo, you can talk to me. Izuku, no, I've never been able to. You always hit me or made fun of me. Bakugo, now, you can talk to me. Izuku, why is all this happening, Bakugo? Why do you hate me? Why your hatred? Bakugo, I can't answer the first. It was a whim, envy. As for your hate towards me, it's justified. I'm to blame for everything, and no, I won't ask for forgiveness. You know I'm not one for such hypocrisies because what I did to you doesn't deserve forgiveness. Izuku, of course, it doesn't. Bakugo simply walked towards Izuku, noticing his arm, the pool of blood forming beneath him, and his face. I think you're amazing, Kachan. Bakugo, I think the same, Deku. Rest. Everyone watched as Bakugo punched Izuku in the abdomen, knocking the air out of him. Finally, he fell unconscious, and Bakugo picked him up without saying a word, heading towards the infirmary, knowing the way well. K Kachan. 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 What do you want, Bakugo? With a furrowed brow, he didn't want to show sadness or tears. Bakugo, was I really that awful? He admired me all the time, and I scorned him, made his life hell, and then this. Kachan, do you want to come to my party? Maybe nobody else will come, but my mom will make lasagna, and we'll play video games. What do you say? Bakugo, I never apologized for not showing up. It was inevitable, his eyes began to well up, tears falling. He swallowed hard and kept walking. Bakugo, the old lady would be so disappointed in me. Now that I think about it, is anyone proud of me? Nobody was my friend, they were all just classmates who feared me, except for the nerd in Kirishima. The girls around couldn't believe what they were seeing, they were two men, but they were scared seeing one without an arm and the other severely injured. Bakugo, and will I leave it like this? 
his steps couldn't continue because his wounds caused him to collapse to the ground, just like the unconscious Izuku, with his arm bleeding, both left halfway down the hallway. Hey, wake up! Izuku, what? Come on, wake up! Izuku, who the hell are you? He asked, confused. Oh, right, you can't see me. Tada! Nice to meet you, I'm Nana Shimura. She said with a big smile. Izuku, Nana, but we already knew each other, why are you introducing yourself? He asked, puzzled. Nana, huh? Girl, you are, she looked at Izuku better. Who are you? Izuku, I'm Izuku, the bearer of the power you're visiting me with. Nana, didn't you call yourself Izumi? Also, I thought men didn't exist anymore? Izuku, wait, 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 are you telling me that for some reason, you're inside the core of one for all, but you're not the Nana I? Kid, this is quick, you have two, oh crap. She whispered, scared. Izuku slash Nana, Nana slash me? Nana, you have to find a way out of here, your body is not from this dimension. With Bakugo, there's no problem, but two one for all can't coexist in the same place. Your body will start to fade after a while being here. Izuku, what? Nana, you only have four months, Izuku. Izuku, damn it, oh damn it, damn it. Nana, Ofa Izumi, kid, I don't know how you got here, but what my other self says, oh her, oh me, I don't know, it's true. Two one for all can't coexist, your body will start to disappear. Izuku, what do I do now? He asked, scared. Nana, you have to find a way to go back, kid, or you'll die, and one for all will die with you. Izuku, alright, I'll do my best to try to go back. Nana, alright, kid, you're already fading from here, you'll wake up any moment. She said so Izuku nodded. Izuku, you um, Nana, before I go, could you give me a hug? Nana, what? Izuku, I don't know, I just want someone to hug me. Nana, with a calm smile, just nodded, walked towards the boy, and extending her arms, Izuku disappeared. Nana, damn it, he disappeared before, she whispered in a deep sigh. Nana too, that kid is really messed up, she whispered, scared. Nana, yeah, I hope he's not so stubborn anymore and lets someone comfort him, she said, disappearing just like the other Nana. Izuku woke up, his eyes slowly opened. In his drowsy state, he saw on one side, his arm was missing. He looked to the other side, and blurry, he saw someone sitting next to him. H-H-A-A-R-Y-U-F feeling be better? A soft voice asked. Only the one on the right. Izuku, a magiki? He whispered, surprised. Izuku, a magiki, he whispered slightly surprised. Kamakiri, ah. Why yes, th that's my name. B but how do you know? She asked, frightened. Izuku, B because where I come from, you and I know each other. He said with a calm smile. Kamakiri, T that confirms you're not from here, right? Izuku, yes, I think it's a bit obvious seeing that I'm a guy, he said with a nervous smile. Kamakiri, why yes, I noticed that. But I'm worried seeing you and the other guy so badly hurt. Are you okay? Kamakiri got up from her seat and, worried, began to approach the boy. Izuku nervously smiled and just took her by the shoulders. Izuku, you're very close, he said with a small bead of sweat. Kamakiri, oh, sorry, she whispered from the other side of the room. Izuku, B but you don't have to go that far away either, he said with an even bigger bead of sweat. Kamakiri, S sorry, D don't get offended, B but you scare me. Izuku, scare you? He asked, confused. Kamakiri, why you're covered in scars and D dark circles? Why you look like a V villain? Izuku, hey, that's offensive. If I look like this, it's because I haven't been able to sleep well and haven't cleaned my face completely, but it's not for you to be afraid of me. In fact, you can trust me with anything, he said with a big smile. Kamakiri, oh okay, she said, turning her gaze away, leaning back a bit. She was still afraid of the boy. Izuku, why is she so afraid of me? Izuku thought, confused. Ah well, never mind. Thanks for bringing us here, we were really badly hurt. Kamakiri, I I have to go. H hope we can see each other a again. Izuku, of course, I hope so, he said with a calm smile, extending his arm. Kamakiri, w what are you doing? She asked, confused. Izuku, I want to shake your hand, 
Oh, I don't have an arm. Kamakiri, you don't have an arm. Izuku, why didn't you tell me they took my arm away? Kamakiri, I thought you had already noticed. Recovery, let's see what's going on here. Izuku, and my arm? Recovery, it got blown off during training. You're lucky the infection wasn't worse or I would have had to take the other one, she said annoyed. Izuku, but what about my arm? Recovery, I'm telling you it got blown off, exploded, it doesn't exist anymore, it won't exist anymore, now they can call you one-armed, got it? She asked, annoyed. Izuku, it was my right one, don't mess with me. Kamakiri, W what's so special about it being the R right one? Izuku, things you'll never understand, he said, starting to cry. It's all Bakugo's fault. Izuku, annoyed, quickly ran to the boy's bed and began to strangle him, or so it seemed. Izuku, damn it, my arm doesn't reach all around his neck. But he didn't stop there, and standing on the bed, he kicked Bakugo, which ended up throwing him to the ground, waking him up. Bakugo, damn it, Inko. Izuku, what? Recovery, uh, Tamakiri and I have things to do. Tamakiri, really? Recovery, do you want to die? Tamakiri shook her head, then yes. Both women left the infirmary leaving the two boys. Bakugo, nerd, I wasn't dreaming about your mom. Izuku, I never said I thought you were dreaming about my mom. Bakugo, it wasn't about your mom, it was about you. Izuku, ah, with enzyme. Bakugo, with you from this world, I mean, yours. Izuku, you're not fooling me, Bakugo, that one is called Izumi. Bakugo, nerd, please. Izuku, get ready. Elsewhere. They were all gathered in the dormitory hall, and some were pacing back and forth. Reiko, what if he can't be a hero anymore? What if he can't go back home because of his arm? What if the infection got so bad they had to take the other one? What if? Kanoko, Yanagi, shut up, you're scaring me. Kendo, poor Midoriya, he must be suffering a lot right now. You're a piece of crap, Bakugo. Ibera, oh, I can even hear his screams, he said with a small tear. Setsuna, no, wait, we all heard that, he said with a nervous smile. Kendo, W what's that coming over there? Yui, oh no, everyone, take cover. And the ceiling broke, dropping both boys. Bakugo, please, just shut up already, idiot. Izuku, no, damn it, you'll learn that no one dreams about my mom. And now why are they fighting? They all whispered with a bead of sweat. Undoubtedly, something they would have to get used to. In someplace else. Kurogiri, do you think it will work, sir? All for one, of course it will work, Kurogiri, especially when he sees who it is. Kurogiri, the Nomu? Not to be rude, but he's already defeated several of them. All for one, no, Kurogiri, not who the Nomu is, but who is the Nomu. Kurogiri, what do you mean by that? It can't be. All for one, let me introduce you to the high-end Nomu, Inko Midoriya. Okay, remember something, girl, peace, calm, and anger. In a lotus position, they both sat, a waterfall cascading over their bodies, yet they remained unaffected. Izuku, try to cover your body with one for all at 8%, now your skin is exposed, you must feel the power as close to you as possible. Izumi, oh okay, she said with a slight blush. Izuku, don't be embarrassed to be like this in front of me. I am you, you are me, okay? Now relax and let the power flow. The rays began to emanate from Izumi's body, and her effort was noticeable. She tried hard to maintain them. Izuku, okay, now throw a punch. Izumi, what? B but I already know how. Izuku, throw, a punch. Izumi had no choice but to agree, a bit confused. She threw a punch in the air, creating a small blast that parted the water for a moment. Izumi, now? Izuku, good, now your goal is to control one for all to deliver that punch without activating it. Izumi, what? But that's impossible. Izuku, no, it's not. Flow of one for all is its name. You flow the energy throughout your body for so long that you do it unconsciously. This will reduce fatigue in battle and increase your percentage and your body's adaptation, for example. Izuku threw a punch in the air, and Izumi didn't see him activate one for all, but she was surprised to see how the water still parted, albeit differently from her own attempt. She literally saw the ground at the bottom as the water almost completely separated before returning to its natural flow. Izumi, H how did you do that? She asked, astonished. 
Izuku, I told you, flow. One for all runs through my interior, not the exterior. It's useful for surprise attacks and getting used to the power. Let's get back to the pose. Izumi just nodded and quickly returned to the lotus position, although it was starting to hurt her. Izuku, we, Izumi, are the last carriers. Izumi, what do you? Izuku, pose. Izumi, yes, sorry, what do you mean by that? Izuku, one for all can no longer be passed on to others, only to quirkless like us, and we are destined to end one for all once and for all, although apparently it already happened in this place. Izumi, why yes, we defeated all for one here. It was a tough fight, but All Might won. Izuku, okay, let me ask you something. You admire All Might a lot, right? Izumi, why yes, of course, I've been his biggest fan since I was little, she said with a slight blush. Izuku, that holds you back. Izumi, what do you mean it holds me back? Izuku, you're inclined to think you have to be like her, and no, that's not it. You are Izumi Midoriya, the next number one hero. All Might doesn't have to follow you, you have to step away from her. Don't let her obstruct your path. Izumi, but how can you say that? She gave us this power to become heroes in that alley, and you're saying we should abandon her? Izuku, of course not. As people, Izuku Midoriya and Toshinori are best friends, mentor and students, father and son. As heroes, All Might was the one I surpassed a long time ago. Do you understand my point now? Izumi, why yes, I understand now. So, wanting to be like All Might has been holding me back? She asked, as Izuku nodded with a slight smile. Izuku, yes, but now let's get back to what we were doing. Peace, anger, and calm. Peace is what you'll bring, anger is what you'll control, and calm is what you'll manage. It's a trifecta to control one for all in the quirks it holds. Izumi just nodded, quite impressed, to be honest. What he was as a man was someone very wise. And Bakugo, lying on a branch, just watched Izuku from afar, his best friend, his worst enemy, and his biggest rival. He also had a trifecta for the boy, but he, too, was impressed to hear him. He had gone from being a coward, breaking bones all the time, to being more powerful than All Might himself. It was something he didn't believe would happen. Baku go, hey, nerd, need a hand? He asked, confused. Izuku, yes, in both senses. He said with a mocking smile, lifting the piece of right arm that remained. Baku go, all right, what do you need me to do? Izuku, I need you to attack her while she tries to dodge and hit you with one for all at 10%. Got it? He asked, for Izumi to nod a bit nervously. Okay, I have to go talk to All Might about something, oh, and remember, the power in this world is 100 or 110% weaker than in ours, don't overdo it, okay? Bakugo, you're asking a lot, but okay, you go to hell, I'll raise the percentage to 20 right away. He said with a smirk. Izuku just nodded and, activating one for all, quickly left. Bakugo, ready? He asked with a mocking smile. Izumi, you uh, no, she said with a sweat drop and slightly scared. Izuku ran and jumped among the trees of Yue until he could leave the forest. From a tree, he took enough momentum and jumped to the rooftop of some dormitories to head towards the academy. And the pain that arose from his feet, a black mass that slowly, almost invisibly, covered him, a table that disappeared, unnoticed by him. Elsewhere. All for one, well, Shigaraki, ready to pay them a little visit? Remember, I don't want a tax, just fear. Shigaraki nodded, a bit annoyed. Okay, how's your new hand coming along? Shigaraki, it's a bit disgusting to have it, but also satisfying, I don't know. All for one just chuckled mockingly. On Shigaraki's face, one of his many hands was different from the others. It wasn't pale, it was fresh, and what stood out the most were scars covering that hand. For as long as I can remember, life greeted me with a kick in the butt. You're quirkless, and you'll always, always be beneath me. One time, did you really think I'd go out with someone like you? Look at yourself, Deku. You're just a nobody. And another, I'm not going to be raising a quirkless child, sorry. And another, forgive me, Izuku. Many times, now that I recall it. But you know something? After that kick in the butt, there was always a kiss on the forehead. Did Katsuki really fight with you? Well, I didn't think that would happen, but you know what, look on the bright side, there's more Katsudon for you, she said with a tender smile. That was how it was all my life. Did she reject you? 
Well, at least look on the bright side, that girl wasn't for you, she'd say, stroking my hair. Kick in the butt and a kiss on the forehead, my crappy life and my mother's consolations always made me see the silver lining in everything, until the day I made the worst mistake of my life. July 15th, 6 10 a.m. It sucks that on my birthday I have to go on patrol with Endeavor instead of going out for wings with the guys, I said with a heavy sigh. Inko, come on, Izuku, you can't talk like that. Besides, can't you go at night? No, the patrol will literally take all day. I think I'll be back at like 3 in the morning or something, I said, annoyed. But come on, son, look on the bright side, Inko said. The bright side? What bright side, mom? It's really stupid and irritating that you try to see the bright side in everything. It's been the same since I was little and it's starting to annoy me. He finished tying his shoelaces and walked towards the door. Inko, uh, okay, sorry for trying. Izuku, no, don't worry about it. You know what, I'll come back with a small cake so at least we can both eat it, like every year. The door slammed shut, leaving a silent Inko with her head down, feeling really bad. That day I said, when I come back, I'll apologize. Now I was in a hurry, you don't know how much I wish I had been late that day. July 15th, 8:10 p.m. It was night, and I didn't know what else to do. We had checked the city a couple of times and, to be honest, it had been a very quiet day, well, except for Bakugo's yelling, which you get used to, everything was relatively quiet. Endeavor, alright, any reports? Bakugo, that damn nerd let a villain escape. Izuku, what? That's not true. You said there wasn't any time and we should go after the most dangerous one. I just followed your lead. Endeavor, alright, alright, calm down. It's okay that you went after the most dangerous one, but it wasn't a good idea to let one loose either. Let's hope he didn't do anything stupid in his escape. Now go for one last round, see if you can find him, he said, and both boys nodded, going their separate ways using their quirks, jumping over buildings in search of the criminal. Izuku was in his own world, he was tired, exhausted, and fed up. He just wanted to go home. Luckily, he would soon, but his thoughts were interrupted when he heard people shouting, so he decided to go towards them, a little scared. Izuku, what's going on? What's happening? He asked, worried. A villain attacked a woman, she's bleeding out. She won't make it, said a woman, taking the boy's hand and running towards the group of people gathered. The people were screaming, some couldn't bear it and fainted from the blood, and Izuku quickly began to walk among them. Izuku, okay, okay, please everyone calm down. We need. I Izuku. Izuku, mom? He asked, confused. For a moment, the world faded away, and he could only see her, lying there on the ground, as the blood slowly flowed even more. And yes, it was that day, the day I lost everything. Mike, wow, that's a brutal origin story, she said seriously. All Might, wow, young man, I'm sorry for everything you've been through. I didn't think you'd been through so much, she said, concerned. Izuku, and things don't end there. Izawa, what do you mean? She asked, confused. Izuku calmly put one leg on top of the other, and quickly began to take off his shoes. Everyone was confused, and more so when they saw a black spot on the sole of the boy's foot. All Might, um, for hygiene, I think you should clean your feet. Izuku, all might, it's not that. This, it's consuming me. Namuri, what? What do you mean it's consuming you? Izuku, the one for all, it's disappearing. One for all? All might, disappearing? She asked, confused. You should take the time to learn and accept, you know? Izumi, B but it's really hard to try to control almost twice as much as I can barely handle, she said, closing her eyes tightly. Izuku, you're letting anger control you, don't do it. You see what happened to me, he said with a slight mocking smile, raising his arm. It was the fourth day of their training, and Izumi hadn't noticed any results. She didn't feel her body getting stronger, she didn't feel her percentage rising, she simply felt nothing. Izumi, you know, I'm starting to think this is a waste of time. Izuku, why do you think that? He asked, confused. Izumi, I don't know, my percentage hasn't increased, and I've only felt more tired. I don't feel like anything is going to change within one for all. Izuku, you know, I always felt like you. Izumi, what? Izuku, yes, you know, I always thought, why do I break my bones? If I don't feel stronger, why do I cry? 
If it only increases my weakness, why do I get angry? If it doesn't improve my strength, these thoughts drain us, Izumi, these thoughts don't let one for all flow, he said with a big smile. Izumi, flow, one for all. Izuku, if I break my bones, it's to strengthen them. If I cry, it's to get rid of the bad moments. If I get angry, it's to find calm. Everything has a reason and a purpose, and the purpose of this training is for you to know that one for all isn't just another quirk, it's the beauty of power. One for all holds people, souls, dreams, thoughts, qualities, and above all, quirks. Izumi, so that's where the seven quirks all for one mention come from? Izuku, of course, throughout your training, you'll develop seven more powers, but you have to discover them. That's the only rule. So for now, can we continue training? He asked, so Izumi nodded with a tender smile, returning to the same pose, closing her eyes and continuing. The water fell on their bodies, soaking them with tranquility, while one for all covered both of them. Izumi felt her body starting to ache, keeping it was so difficult, but then seeing Izuku, seeing that calmness as a higher percentage ran through him, encouraged her to know that she could do it. Elsewhere. So, did you bring me information? He asked, confused. They're training to control the percentage and defeat you, all for one. All for one, hmm, all right, let them believe they'll become strong, and just when the time comes, let them know their efforts were in vain. It'll be so satisfying to see their faces fall knowing they won't be able to surpass me in power. But well, now, what can I do with you? Kurogiri, I recommend leaving him in a shopping center without remembering any of this, as always. All for one, sounds good, hey, ha, ha. Kurogiri, what's so funny, sir? All for one, that nobody pays attention to the secondary character in the story, nobody cares to know where he is, and although he's one of the few men apart from us in this dimension, nobody pays him any importance. It's as if he doesn't exist, and that, benefits us a lot. Katsuki Bakugo hadn't awakened from All for One's control. All for One can control him whenever he wants. That day, I felt his warmth, saw his face, and since then I can't stop thinking about him. And now, I don't know what to do. Is it something bad? She asked, worried. Recovery girl simply sighed heavily. No, young lady, nothing bad is happening to you. You're simply in love, she said with a calm smile. Would you mind telling me which of the two boys it is? I it's Izuku, the one with freckles, green hair, a gentle and handsome face, well-defined chest, a bit tall, straight and well-kept hair, slender hands, with some scars that. She trailed off nervously. Yes, I know who he is, recovery girl interrupted with a nervous smile and a small drop of sweat. Well, then, what do you think you should do? I I don't know. It's the first time something like this has happened to me. And just thinking about him is so. Ah, she exclaimed with a silly smile as she clasped her hands together and began rubbing them on her legs while staring at the ceiling. And how do you think this happened? Recovery girl asked, confused. He didn't even know me, yet he saved me, putting himself above me so nothing would happen to me. And it was in that moment that I saw him, as my protector. And I know he feels the same way about me. Otherwise, he wouldn't have saved me, she explained. Well, I don't want to burst your bubble, but you have to consider something. He's the male version of Izumi Midoriya, the girl who saves everyone, regardless of anything, recovery girl cautioned. Eh? And he would sacrifice himself for anyone. But who's to say he doesn't think you're special? Maybe he felt the same spark as you did, recovery girl said with a small drop of sweat. Or really, does recovery girl think so? She asked hopefully. Of course, dear. Now go and try talking to him, invite him for ice cream or something. But you should catch him when he's free, as I heard he has a lot of talks with the teachers, which are confidential. Besides, I think it should be something within the academy, you know, being the only male in a world where they've been trying to conceive one for a long time. It might not be the best idea to take him out. Do you understand? Yes, take him out at night and conceive a man with him, understood recovery girl, she said with a deep blush, matching her smile. Girl, no, wait, that's not. She's gone, recovery girl sighed, clicking her tongue. Well, if she manages it, it will help science in some way, so I don't see the problem, she said, returning to her seat, waiting for another patient. Elsewhere. Izawa, all right brat, we have an idea to send you two back to your world, but it'll be risky. Bakugo, we're listening. Izawa, an explosion brought you here, right? He asked. Izuku, yes, for me. 
but we haven't figured out how all for one and Kurogiri could come. But I imagine it was through the same method they used to bring Bakugo. Aizawa, we're going by that. All Might and I were awake all night searching for the formula and realized something, which is power, power can open momentary breaches by breaking the plane we're on. Izuku, so the explosion was so powerful it brought me here. I suppose all for one must have used his combined quirks to make an attack strong enough to open a breach for the three of us. What do you think, Bakugo? Bakugo, I don't know. I have nothing to say. All Might, young Bakugo, please help us with something to help you, she said, slightly annoyed. Bakugo, and what if I don't want your help? Izuku, what do you mean? He asked, confused. Bakugo, nerd, everyone found out everything, everything I did, all my mistakes, all the damn shitty person I was. If they worked with me, it was because they wanted to bring you back, but... His tears began to fall, both teachers fell silent, feeling a bit sorry for the boy, but Izuku. And? Is it something you deserve or not? You deserve to pay for everything you did, for everything you did to me, Izuku said. I know that, but I don't want to. Here nobody sees me above them and. And isn't that what you always wanted? For everyone to see you above them? Izuku interrupted. Nerd, are you going to let me finish? Bakugo asked. No, Bakugo, it's better if you shut up and help us get back, because it's your damn fault we're here. You had to make that damn explosion trying to kill me, and don't lie, I know you were trying to kill me, Izuku said angrily as Bakugo simply lowered his head. Izuku, come on, Bakugo, look me in the eyes, just like you used to every time you humiliated me. Bakugo, you need to listen to me, nerd. Izuku, no, you listen to me. We're not friends, not even acquaintances. We're just two guys trapped in a world that isn't even ours. It doesn't matter at all, and it doesn't matter anything. We're not friends, and we never will be. And if you want to stay here, fine, do it. As a hero, I'd give my life for anyone, but if I had to sacrifice you to save myself, believe me, Bakugo, I'd step on your head to leave you behind. Aizawa, enough, you too, it's not the time to fight. You have to go back to Japan, and we. Bakugo, you just don't understand. Izuku, what the hell don't we understand, Bakugo? Bakugo, there's no Japan to return to. Everything's destroyed, everyone's dead. All for one came for that. There's nothing to rule in nothing. Japan as we knew it doesn't exist anymore, it's a crater. They're all dead, our classmates, half and half, ponytail, shitty hair. They're all dead, Deku. All for one one, and I, I couldn't do anything, not even to save that girl. Izuku, Bakugo, what girl? Bakugo, I didn't want to tell you. Izuku, Bakugo, what the hell happened to Iri? Bakugo, all for one stole her quirk and killed her. Izuku, what? Bakugo, she died, and I couldn't do anything to save her. And now I'm scared. He, he didn't kill me for a reason. There's something he needs from me, and I'm sure he'll come to get it at any moment. And when that happens, we won't be ready. M. My name is E. Eerie, and what's yours, M. Mr. Hero? D. Dad, why you're my dad? Dad, you won't leave me, right? Now that you know, before she died, she left me this. From his pocket, he took out a small piece of paper. Izuku didn't want to open it, he knew he couldn't handle it, but he did it anyway, and tears began to fall. It was a drawing of him, Eerie, and Nehire, who was the girl she saw as a mother figure. Behind them, a pink house, and he recognized them because she had written their names. Can Daddy and I go live somewhere together? That was the question marked on the paper, adorned with hearts in all its corners. I want all the girls from both courses of the three years in the biggest training room UA has at 6am tomorrow. I'll be there. He grabbed his backpack and without saying anything else, he kept the drawing to leave. He didn't want them to see him cry. Bakugo simply stayed with his head down. It was as if he wasn't the same as always. Izuku quickly ran to his room. All he wanted was to get there, cry, and calm down, but the world. It's never on his side. As he entered the dorms, he didn't consider that all his classmates would be there, and all of them noticed his face. Kendo, are you okay, Izuku? She asked, concerned as tears kept falling from the boy. They all quickly approached the worried boy. Ibera, What's wrong, Midoriya? Why are you sad? Setsuna, want to play video games to cheer up? Kanoko, do you want something to eat? Yui, go somewhere? 
They tried to find something to cheer him up, not knowing that the pain he felt was one that, although not physical, hit him like the sharpest sword. Izuku, just step back, I want. I want to be alone. Reiko, and no, Izuku, B being alone won't H help anything. L let me help, L let us help. L let us help you in any way we can. A after all, you're special to me, to us, you're special to us. For a moment, Izuku looked at all of them, and the question quickly came to his mind. When? No one had ever cared for him before, and seeing him cry, everyone always ignored him. It never mattered to them. And he saw it in their faces, genuine concern. They were worried about him. And looking at the first girl in front of him, he hugged her tightly. Manoma, all right, everything's fine, don't cry, she said with a slight blush as she stroked the boy's hair. She was my daughter, and I. I loved her. She was the purest person who could exist in this damn world, and that bastard killed her, he took her from me, he took away one of the most important people in my life. They all stood in shock. Did he say? Daughter? No one knew what was going on, but even so, they wouldn't leave him alone. Manoma, I know it hurts to lose a loved one, and don't worry about us. You can cry, you can cry all you want. I won't leave your side until you calm down. The conceited blonde-haired girl hugged the boy with a tender smile, as he cried on her chest, letting out the pain of life. But of course, at other times, it wouldn't have been like this. Someone like her never shows her true feelings. Izuku woke up to a new morning at UA, birds singing their usual tunes, nothing out of the ordinary. And though he was a bit annoyed, he had to accept that Ida started knocking on his door. At a certain point, he appreciated it, it was like having a personal alarm clock. Not just anyone would do that for him. Ida, hey, Midoriya, time to get ready. I'll be waiting downstairs. He said from the other side of the door. Izuku, hey, dude, can you come in for a moment? A little confused, Ida nodded and carefully opened the door to see his companion sitting on the edge of his bed. Ida, are you okay, Midoriya? He asked, puzzled. Izuku, yeah, don't worry, but you know, I had such a weird dream that I want to tell someone about. Ida, oh, sure, Midoriya, just make it quick. You know how Izawa gets if we're late. He said with a nervous smile, prompting Izuku to nod. Izuku, okay, so where do I start? Alright, so it turns out that when all that stuff happened with me leaving UA because of those problems with all for one, you guys tried to bring me back. Ida, but that did happen. Izuku, okay, but listen to this. It turns out that through a portal created by Kurogiri, I was sent to another dimension. It was packed with women, there was a female me, a female you, and everything was very vague. Ida, vague? He asked, confused. Izuku, yeah, I mean, there was no continuity in anything. It was like everything connected at some point but it was so mediocre it seemed like a poorly written story, you know? It seemed like one of those classic stories where someone unhappy with their life makes their favorite character in a world of only women, and they all fall in love with the protagonist because somehow it reflects their sad life. Ida, harsh but concise. Izuku, and there it was still in the past, but all for one from that world was already dead, and my power was much stronger than All Might's, and it was incredible. Everything was so real. He whispered with a small smile. Ida, well, they say sometimes dreams are premonitions, so who's to say you won't go to a world where we're all women through a portal, he said with a mocking smile, making Izuku laugh. Izuku, maybe, if that happened, I don't know what I'd do, you know, a man in a world full of women would be a unique specimen for experiments, poor whoever gets something like that. Ida, yeah, but well, let's go. Remember, today we have training with class B. Besides, I want to see how much you've progressed with one for all. Izuku, well, not much. I've dedicated more time to resting than anything else, you know, going out with Yanagi, and stuff. Ida, yeah, Yanagi, she's a good girl for you, you know. Take care of her. Izuku, of course I do, besides you guys, she's a pillar, you know, she also helps me take care of my mother's grave. Not every girl does that he said with a smile. Ida, all right, now go take a shower because being in a world of women made you sweat too much, old man, you stink. He said, causing Izuku to just laugh as Ida closed the door. Izuku let out a big sigh and got up from his bed, heading to the bathroom. He felt like he was hugging Monoma, he could still feel it, feel his chest, which at some point could be considered perverted but it was so real for a dream. Izuku, nah, 
I'm probably just getting carried away. It's impossible for that to happen. He said with a mocking smile. And so the morning passed for Izuku, he was somewhat restless, the dream had him worried all morning, because it's as if everything had happened. Izuku. Izuku, if all that was real, no, it couldn't be. Izuku. Izuku, it would be a bit counterproductive to tell anyone, they'd think I'm crazy. Izuku. Izuku, oh, weird. Izuku, she shouted. Izuku, I didn't dream anything, he shouted, startled. Reiko, huh? Izuku, oh, it's just you. Reiko, w well yeah, w were you e expecting someone else? She asked, annoyed. Izuku, I don't know if you're trying to be jealous, but you're cute when you do. So stop it. He said with a mocking smile. Reiko, I'm not jealous. W why would I be o of someone like you? Izuku, hmm, you're right, I don't know. Reiko, yeah, of course you don't know. You think you know everything just because you're handsome, sweet, cute, with perfect hair, and that gaze that charms. It's obvious you don't know anything, she said with a slight blush, turning her gaze away. Izuku, are you trying to insult me? Reiko, of course I am. Did I offend you? She asked, concerned. Izuku couldn't help it and simply started laughing. Izuku, come here, he said, starting to pinch the girl's cheeks. Reiko, Izuku, you're stretching them she said with tears in her eyes as she felt her cheeks being pulled. And is this the guy who's going to defeat the biggest villain of all? Asked everyone in the classroom who watched the tender scene from afar with a sweat drop. Izuku only looked at Reiko with a small smile, stretching her cheeks simply gave him peace. It told him that everything would be fine, that all his burdens were gone, that everything had vanished, without a doubt. Izuku, this is much better than a dream, he thought with a big smile. Reiko blushed deeply, and her classmates just watched with a satisfied smile, that smile, that smile, which they could protect. Baku go, well, at least he's calm, he thought as he ate some snacks. Ida, hey, Baku go, don't you think it's too early to eat that? He asked, confused. Baku go, shut up, shitty hair, he muttered angrily, licking his fingers. Well, at least everything is back to normal, Izuku whispered with a calm smile. In another place. Izumi, so, you just squeeze your butt, and that's it? She asked, confused. All might, of course, Miss Midoriya, you just need to release it, and that's it. He said with a big smile, giving a thumbs up. Izumi, are you sure? Don't you need, like, a ritual or something? She asked, sweating. All might, well, no. Izumi, wow, that's kind of disappointing, she said with a nervous smile. All might, come on, young Midoriya, don't think about that let's go, you have to go to UA, or you'll be late for the exam. He said with a calm smile. Izumi, why yes, she said. Remembering the exam, all her senses were heightened again, she was nervous. All Might, come on, young Izumi, don't. Izumi, All Might? She asked, confused. All Might, W what is this? He thought, scared. She felt the weight of nine souls, nine powers, nine strengths above her, she felt like her legs slowly wanted to stop responding, and her strength was leaving. Izumi, All Might, A All Might. All Might, huh? Oh yes, W what's wrong, young Midoriya? He asked with a nervous smile. Izumi, I I have to go now, I'm late, W will see each other there, right? All Might, ah, yes, young, of course, see you there, he said, so Izumi nodded and quickly ran away from there. In the end, all Might ended up passing this power on to me, and now. I don't know what to do, she thought, scared, looking at the huge robot in front of her. I should go somewhere else, I'll surely score more points in. Damn robot, son of a bitch. With rubble on top of her, she tried to explode it, but it just did nothing, and the robot kept getting closer. Come on, Katsumi, blast this son of a bitch. Her efforts were futile, her hope was beginning to disappear. See come on, why you can't, you can't stay here she muttered, annoyed. Kachan, let's, let's be heroines together. Of course, nerd, she said with a big smile. Katsumi, why do you call me that? She asked with a small pout. Simple, you're smart, and you always see every attack, you're like a little brainiac, and your deductive ability is amazing, that's why you're a nerd. Well, if you put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad anymore, she said with a big smile. Katsumi, ha, for a moment, I almost forgot. She opened her eyes, 
just to see Izumi in the sky with her sleeves tearing apart, and with her fists smoking. Katsumi, this idiot always has something up her sleeve. Izumi punched the robot, and smashed it. Just like her bones. And just as she was falling, Katsumi managed to break free and using her explosions quickly reached her to prevent her from getting hurt. Katsumi, stupid nerd, are you okay? She asked, concerned. Izumi, hey, I've been better, she said with a mocking smile. Katsumi simply gave a small smile as both fell to the ground. In the end, I don't even know if I did well on that exam. I only managed to destroy a zero-point robot, and as good as I may have done in the theoretical part, I don't know what I'll do with the practical part. Izumi, Izumi, Izumi. Izumi, ha, huh, what's up, mom? She asked, confused. Inko, you've been staring at your fish for too long. Are you okay? She asked, concerned. Izumi, oh yeah, it's just that I'm a little worried about the exam, that's all. Inko, oh, is that it? Well, daughter, whether you pass or not, I want you to know that I'll be proud of you, and there will always be another year to try again, she said with a sincere smile. For some reason, those words filled me with peace, I no longer felt so pressured by the exam. After a couple of weeks, the results came. Miss Izumi Midoriya, you, through rescue points under the tutelage of a qualified jury, have obtained 60 points. You did it, miss. Izumi, why yes. Welcome to your hero academy. I passed, which I didn't think would happen, but in the end, I did it, and right now I realize that this will be a bit harder than I thought. A group of girls was in the courtyard, all first-year students including her and Katsumi. All right, Miss Shiyazaki, come and throw the ball, she said so that Ibera, with her serene face, nodded, and with her hair grabbed the ball. Ibera, when I say Professor Izawa. Izawa, all right, you can throw it, now, she said so that Ibera, nodding, began to sway her hair, and using that strength, threw the ball with such force that it even created a small gust of wind due to the flexion, surprising everyone. Impressive, well, go back to your place, now, Izumi Midoriya. Izumi, why yes. For some reason, I felt the pressure of all the girls watching me, there were approximately 52 students there. It was a lot of pressure to fail. Izawa, hey. Izumi, why yes? Izawa, relax, no one will judge you if you fail, now throw. Izumi, okay, she nodded, taking a deep breath and grabbing the ball. Remember, young, clench your fists. Izumi, and scream from the bottom of your heart, sma. Smash. Izawa, what the heck? Everyone was covered in the huge air current. For a moment, they thought it came from Izumi, but seeing her also held to the ground, they realized it wasn't her. The dust slowly dispersed, and the first thing they saw was someone, with white hair, unconscious on the ground, his arms seemed severely burned, his pale skin, and he was all bruised. Come on, come on, get up, you said you'd kill me. I want you to try, come on, Shigaraki Tomura, kill me like you killed her, he shouted angrily. Mock me, as she won't come back. Even in his unconscious state, he maintained that mocking smile. The shock of everyone came when they realized the guy with white hair was. A man, they all whispered, surprised. Why did you do it? W why did you do it? Shigaraki, T to hurt you, kid. Shigaraki started laughing, that laugh that chilled everyone's blood, filled them with fear, and even Aizawa felt his leg trembling slightly. And everyone got even more scared when they saw the guy in the green suit start hitting him so hard that you could even hear his skull cracking little by little until there were simply no more hits, no more complaints. D did he kill him? Asked a scared girl. Aizawa, hey you, who are you? She asked, annoyed as she took off her bandages. But everyone took a step back, afraid and terrified, when they saw the guy who had turned around. But everyone took a step back, afraid and terrified, when they saw the guy who had turned around. Izuku, this, this must be a joke, he muttered angrily, as he saw Izawa on guard, and the other teachers arriving. 